and welcome to the first of hopefully many um, videos on micro workshops um, on printmaking which is something I am a professional in and I love to teach. Um, the first three videos which I'll be uploading over the next few days are looking at some of the basic introductory techniques um, to this which is described as dry point card it's a plastic coated card on one surface and standard sort of grey card on the other. It's in essence very similar, or the same stuff as Tetra Pak. Um, so if you haven't got any of this, or we, or you found some of the printmaking stockists, such as in Taglia Printmaker, um, have run out or not um, shipping at the moment, cut up some orange juice cartons, cereal packets as well might work. You'd have to have a play, um, and you've got some. You will need a press for this technique. If you don't have one, please do not go out to the um, printmaking studios, they're not open and it's, you can't go there at the moment. But what you can do is you can make your plates, sort of stash them and when everything's open again you can then go to an open, open access studio and utilise the facilities. You can even get to the stage of inking up just so you can see your marks and that will give you an idea into the techniques. The first video, we're just working online. You'll see a nice fun array tools of here. It looks a bit like a dental surgery or surgeon's <laughs> operating table from the 16th century. Um, but they are all some, some of the tools I use to make line work. These little videos are to give you an idea. Please go away and have a play as long as you're safe because I am, you know, I'm just giving you an idea. I do not know at all and I learn every day from students as they may learn from me. I hope they do. I'm going to start by drawing into this and it is in essence a surface by which you are trying to create an embossed line or a scratch in the surface. That will print as a positive, in this case black, a positive black mark, any indentation in this surface. The drawing I'm going to be doing, and I'm just going to start with a lump of rock or concrete, um, I'm just going to draw hopefully a generic subject. Um, which I'm going to be utilising across all my videos, so there's none of my own influence too much within it. It's about technique. I'm using this rock to draw the outline of a cave. Um, again, I like the idea of using a stone to draw a cave. To me, that makes sense. Um, you'll see if you can. I know it's tricky in the light, the white and white, but you'll certainly be able to feel if you do it yourself. Some really nice scratches. If you go through the back, it doesn't matter. It's just a piece of card. Next, I'm going to um, draw my fire outside the cave. I'm going to be using what we describe. Oh, it's a very funny fire. Um, describe in printmaking as an etching needle. Basically, it's a very sharp point inset into a wooden handle used in etching or dry point. Um, you can obviously use a dressmaking pin, safety pin, anything if you around the house, as long as you can safely use it. And you'll notice here, I'm really scuffing up the surface of the card. You see that, nice and fluffy. That will really hold a lot of ink, it'll be nice and black. I'm kind of trying to emulate the idea of the black holes underneath. Just make sure you don't have too many loose bits, because they get caught in your ink. The etching needle, if used as a drawing tool, creates nice fine lines, which is what I'm doing here with the logs to hold the billy can. Next, I'm going to actually go back to the needle. I'm just going to add some grasses here, outside my cave, give it a bit of, bit of life. Apologies for the black fingerprints all over my dry point card. They seem to leave black fingerprints as a sort of a trail, generally, everywhere I go. I did wash them, apparently. Okay, there we go. Next. It's only a very long one because um, that's what I had as a spare needle. Big netting needle with a nice soft point. Creates a really nice mark. I'm going to be using this to draw outline of a few hills in the background. Dry point card is pressure sensitive. The harder you press, the darker the line. So I'm getting lighter as I go to my third hill in the background. Hopefully to give a sense of depth. Next, nice three inch nail. This one I've had for about four years, it's my trusty, trusty one. I'm using it to draw the outline of a few trees. Again, um, pressure sensitive, so I'm doing the nice the foreground ones really strongly, scuffing up their trunks a bit. 
um, the background ones are quite faint. I'm going to go for a generic pine for ease. Again, in the background, I'm doing it very faintly. It's incredibly sensitive, the dry point card. So, you know, even if you just caress the surface, it will produce something. And I like it because you can really take out all your emotions on it. You can really sort of kick it about, um, which in print making is quite unusual. We tend to be quite precious about print making plates. And I, as you can see, I'm certainly not particularly precious about print making plates. Going back to the etching needle, I'm just going to add some details in foreground hills, little dashes. Bear with this, I appreciate it might be difficult to see because the white on white is um, difficult, but you'll see it when I'm inking up. I'm adding a few very faint lines in the background hill to give it a different texture. I'm going to use this piece of wire. I'm going to use the end. You could, of course, use the curved bit, have a play. I'm going to use the end to kind of just add a bit of movement in the foreground. Simple as that. Done the rock, done that. Last one, this is a dressmaking pattern making tool. This is my great grandmother's in law. Very sharp points, it's basically um, <laughs> my own version of a roulette wheel. Um, and this creates a nice spot, so I'm using it to sort of create the idea of smoke coming off the fire. Obviously, I've abandoned the fire and I'm not going to have a cup of tea, um, but it's got some nice dry point marks coming off it, so that's all that matters. Finally, I've got here a tiny circle of just paper with a bit of masking tape on the back. I'm using that as a guide to create the idea of a sun from which I'm drawing very faint etching needle lines coming off it. Um, because I know where these videos are going and to add the sun in with the line work is going to be useful further down the line. I'm using a guide because I can't draw circles, so that helps me. Okay, that is the dry point card drawn. Next you need to force ink into the grooves you've made, into the embossed and scratched lines. To do that, I use a cut in half credit card, loyalty card. Um, if you are using one of these, the edge you're applying ink with, please sand down so it's not so sharp, including the corners. You can also use, a, um, if you're a screen printer, a screen printing squeegee, which has been cut up. So this is the thing that would go like that, and it's cutting up. Again, nice smooth edge. This ink I'm using is actually uh, from a Taglia printmaker. It's their basic litho relief ink. Um, I find it has a nice consistency for this. And I'm not one for posh inks, um, even though I absolutely love Charbonnel inks, until I'm necessarily... Um, Editioning for someone else or um, have a fine aqua tint on an etching. Um, something like dry point card, I found it really doesn't make much difference. So you can see I've just scraped it in. I was holding the scraper at a sort of 35 45 degree angle. Like that, you risk scraping your plate. Like that, you're just smearing it. Once it's kind of covered and approached more angled, you need to remove. All the excess ink, the ink that is not forced into those lines, that's just sitting on the surface. You can use printmaking scrim for those who are printmakers. It's very, um, it's a glue incised, glue covered cheesecloth, for want of another word. Um, again, for this particular method, I just use old cotton bed sheets. Um, I can't always afford scrim. This works, so that's what I use. I've made a nice pad, I'd put all the corners into the back, made a nice pad, nice smooth area. I use nice circular motions all over because you're forcing the ink in circles from all directions into the line. Turn your plate occasionally, again just getting that ink in all directions into the line. You can probably begin to see some of the line work appearing. Keep finding cleaner bits of your cloth. You don't have to always use a completely clean cloth to do this. Um, sometimes it's nice to have a bit of ink left over because it's not so aggressive when wiping down your plate. It's very clear now to see my marks. Now I know my printing press, I know what how much ink I need to leave on the plate. This is for you to play with. You'll see now I'm doing a very nice quick wrist action polish.
further down the line in the videos we will talk about leaving some ink on and what effects that can get. For the time being, I want, I'm looking at producing a nice clean plate, clean edges, ready to print. Before you um, take it down to the printing press, check the back. You're going to end up with bits like that, but if you end up with really big blobs of ink, they're going to force themselves out of the edge of your um, plate, printing plate, when it's under the high pressure of the press and you'll end up with a nice black blob. So just have a quick check. If you have any blobs, just you know wipe them off with a bit of rag. So that is ready to go. My printing press is here. You'll notice the edge of tissue paper. I can't get the whole thing into the shot, so apologies for that, but you will see the press bed move. So I am actually doing this live, not Blue Peter style. Um, here's one I made earlier. I have in um, a bucket of clean water behind me, I have a piece of Fabriano paper. It's a 120 gram paper. It's been soaking in water for about five minutes. You need to print, well, you don't need to, but ideally you print onto wet paper because the fibres of the paper are relaxed, so they get forced into the grooves of your, of your print. I pulled it out of the water and then I put it underneath, sandwiched in between two bits of blotting paper and patted off all the big droplets of water and the excess moisture so it's just got a nice even dampness. We will talk about pre-soaking your paper um, but for this right now I just did a quick soak. Now you'll notice it's under extremely high pressure to pick up all the little marks so please be careful when turning your press Okay, I'm now going to just come over here and pull off the print. There we go. So you can see all the marks very clearly. You can see a nice scraping through there of the um, etching needle. Got the nice rock marks, they're rather beautiful. Lovely nail, I really like the strength, I sort of really want to bite into it of this nice black line. The wire work is really nice and freedom and you'll, you'll see the trees are fainter in the background. Again, my knitting needle is fainter to get, hopefully give this idea of depth. The sun with the lines, again, you can see how fine it will pick up, what fine lines. Um, and the lovely roulette, the spots. Um, so I hope that gives you a nice sense of what you can achieve with just basic line and Obviously the tools I've given you and shown here are just the beginning. Look around, rummage in your kitchen cupboards, go outside, find things to draw with. It's really sensitive and good fun. If you don't have access to a press again, you could even just ink up your plates like this. And that gives you, they're beautiful and that gives you a sense of what's going on. Don't feel you always have to print the printing plate. Um, I'm a big believer in, <laughs> if you like it like that, you like it like that, you know. That's cool. Um... Okay, I think that is pretty much covers everything. Again, we'll be back in the next few days with the next stage of this, which we'll be looking at texture. I hope everyone enjoyed that and thank you for listening.